I'm Tommy Barnes, and we're bringing music back to the people on Random Acts of Music. We're here with Tommy Barnes. When I say we're, I mean the audience. And True there's that. There's actually nobody here. It's like the loneliest job ever. I'm Henry J. How you doing, bud? Good I'm doing perfect. Yeah. Thank you for coming to the radio station today. And you're with iHeartMedia. That's right, the radio side of things. As yeah. we can tell by this microphone thing that I, <laughs> I hang around with every <laughs> single day. The microphone, you just jiggle yeah, around. That yeah, that $500 sure mic. You have a lot of heart. Uh, and you've been doing this for quite some time. How long have you been doing this? Actually, I moved to Ohio about 1987. Thanksgiving mm -hmm. Day, having dinner, truck stop in Fort Wayne, Indiana with three screaming babies. Oh, my goodness. And here we are in 2016 sitting here at the radio station. I, uh, my background was actually in the welding supply business. It's what brought me to Ohio. Right. I got this phone call one day from a fellow that says, what do you think of Ohio? And I said, well, I don't know. What do you think about sending me a plane ticket? And so I came out here, fell in love with the state immediately, and uh, went to work for a company called Ohio Air Products, who had some locations around the area, and then they sold out literally right after I got here. And I went to work for another big company, Liquid Carbonic and Finley. So I'm making that long commute from Mansfield to Finley every day. That is a long haul. Yeah, yeah it is, about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so and you that know, breakfast tequila just did not make it e any <laughs> no. easier to get to work. Yeah. No, and I was really bummed when Jolly Pirate and Crestline closed down, too, i got to tell you. Yeah, we don't have any donut shops in this town, but well, I we, digress. Uh, anyway, yeah, we so, do. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one day I'm, I'm driving back and forth to Finley, and there was a radio station, a startup station here in Mansfield, first radio station that started up in like 25 years. It was called The Apple, a yeah, classic rock right, format. Right. And uh, there was a young man on the station at the time named Tim Kelly. And Tim used to do a show called The Goldmine Show. And you could be a guest DJ with Tim by sending him 25 words or less why you wanted to do it. Right. So this is like uh, winter of, uh, say, 1989-ish, somewhere in there. I sent a couple entries. The third one I sent to him actually on a toilet paper roll. Back in the day when we were kids, yeah. there was a commercial <laughs> about the family writing on the toilet paper roll how crappy it was, literally. <laughs> and, you know, so mom got the right. idea, I better go get some, some other, some Charmin or whatever it was. So I actually wrote this poem on a toilet paper roll and mailed it to Tim. And I got this phone call one day. And Tim's like, hey, you won this month. Why don't you come in and be a guest DJ with me on a Saturday sweet, night? Sweet, so a right. snowy Saturday evening in January of 90, yeah. I show up at the studio, and Tim and I sat around and, and did this great four-hour show. It was similar to what we've had this year, 2016. We've had a very early spring, nice weather. I started going out fishing probably the first part of March, actually. And right. Tim and I, our conversation led that he loved to fish. So I called him up and said, hey, you want to go out? About three days later, he calls me and says, would you like to be working here part-time for us, learning the business? And I was like, my goodness, I couldn't break down the door quick enough. <laughs> and I've learned since then, if the door and radio opens, don't take your foot out of the way. No, no, Make no, sure no, it stays no. well, wide open. Any job. I don't, you know, it's like, it's like kids now, I book uh, 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 artists for the show. True. And they say, well, could I come over in two or three weeks and then could we rehearse and how many takes do we get? I said, you got to come over now, and you get one. <laughs> exactly. Any others you have to pay for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because, you know, there's no money in the TV show. I do TV spots and voiceovers. And right. That's how I make my living. So you're a big supporter of local talent. I mean, this is awesome, all the, the Internet stuff. Tell, tell people how they find out who's playing Where? in the area. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, quite honestly, that journey for me. They can listen me, to you, first of all. Sure. We have our on the Fox 102.3 and 107.7. We have our local rock report, which is on the radio Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We also have a gigantic listing on our website, which is WFXNTheFox.com. I was showing you that prior to the camera going here. The list is several pages long. Yeah. So I, I kind of consider myself for 26 years now the local rock babysitter. I mean, literally back to the days with the Apple, I was doing a local rock report. So quite honestly, all these great musicians that a lot of um, you, you have met. There's some good players here. A lot of great players in this area, and in the whole state of Ohio for that matter. True. Ultimately, we became great friends, and they started supplying me with the information. Venues started supplying it to us, and so it nice. just took off. And when you go to our website, quite honestly, the local rock page gets thousands and thousands of hits every month. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people, such as yourself, have actually mm -hmm. gone to it to see who's playing oh, yeah. where, yeah. where they're playing, uh, we try to list it by band name, some of its venue. We've got benefits on there. When I, you and I met a couple days ago, we were seeing a young girl that you had filmed, Jay Marino. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Deer Ridge Golf Course, and that kind of got our conversation going. And it seemed to me like the next day I was at a benefit at the Amvets in Mansfield for Resurrecting Lives. Yeah. Later that evening, I'm yeah. emceeing an event at the Moose Lodge. For me, and like you, as a musician yourself, I, yeah. I try to play the guitar. Um, music is everything. And I've thought that really quite honestly in all my years of radio. I'm, I'm very fortunate to I do a morning show, a news talk on WMAN, which is 98.3. Been doing that for, gosh, since 1999. And I've also been the voice of the Fox for our afternoon drive uh, for the whole duration of the time that we've had the station on the air, which has probably been about 12 years now. So for me, uh, my kids have finally grown up. I can actually get out a little bit more often, not have to worry about them, go to see these great bands and try to support anything and everything they're doing. And you do, because when Jay was out there, you came out to see her play. She's 17, and she's doing just very polite, very professional. It's a joy to have her on the show. So Absolutely. I mean, it's and rare that, when you find a 17-year-old like that, that you could work with. They usually, you know, 17, they usually come in and say, is this your crap? <laughs> yeah, it's my crap, and I'll sit yeah. down and let's talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, one of the things that I think probably one of the, the coolest parts of, of doing this for so long is going back to the, the younger kids. Yes. Um, yes. There's a young man, uh, Will Beeman, who I met when he was 14. He's probably 16 or so now. He lives in Nashville. Hurricane Will, a very tremendous blues player. Uh, there's a young fellow out of the uh, Hocking Hills area, Nelsonville, Micah Kesselring. Mm -hmm who I saw when he was like 14. Uh, there's a lot of these young kids. You can't hardly go on Facebook or YouTube any day now without seeing an eight-year-old drummer doing Metallica or something yeah, like that. Yeah, where did all the talent come from? We were such putzes. You know, <laughs> I still have a hard time learning stuff that kids can do just, just like that. You know, I think for me personally, it boils down to my wife and her brothers. Her, both of her brothers play guitar. Mm -hmm. And when I was 27, which was a few years ago, they bought me an Epiphone guitar. And right. I got to tell you, Henry, that guitar has never left my sight. It's been on a stand in the living room. That's where you have to for keep years. it. For years. You've got to keep it where you look at it and say, you know, I ought to pick that up. You I know? need a few yeah. more blisters right here, yeah, perhaps. That's good. And so what happened, it jumped to the next generation. Two of my three sons both play, became way better than I'll ever think about getting. Mm -hmm. They both had bands together. They started off with the Genius Project a local Mansfield band, and my son Dan now plays with a band in Mansfield called the Death Rays. Wow. So to be yeah. able to make that transition as a father, to have your kids doing something like that, and, and I could go back to a lot of artists around here, the Jimmy Vincents, who grew up in a musical family, Jeremy and Tommy Allen. Uh, Jeremy is with Red Ball Jets, Tommy's right. with the in band fact, Departure. I sat in with Jeremy over at MVP. Yeah. yeah, and to see those guys who grew up with that kind of a musical influence, and now you've got a guy like Jeremy Allen who's helping out a girl like Jay Marina yeah. to kind of learn the ropes and learn the path and on the direction she wants to go. And this is what I wanted to know. What, what musicians always want to do is record a CD mm -hmm. and get on the radio. True. Why is it so hard? Technology has changed that makes it easier to record. You know, does, one yeah. of my sons actually recorded five CDs in his bedroom. The, you know, the $400 Sure mic hanging in the closet, yep. things of that nature. And I just think that uh, radio has probably just gotten so big. You don't have a lot of the small town ownership that you did in years gone past. And so forth. there's a few more hoops you probably have to go through to get through the corporate world to have your music heard. But you know what? At the same time, I think that musicians and people have gotten a lot smarter. Social media is level you know, the playing field as far is, as I'm concerned. You can exactly. be heard and you can be discovered. It's still not easy. You, you have, have to be out there and you have to be consistent. But well, yeah, you I think the noticed. main thing I told two of my sons back in the day is you have to be your own best promoter. Oh, yeah. You know, you have oh, yeah. to be able to, to understand what you're doing, feel really confident about what you're doing, and get out there and promote what you're doing. You know, I told my boys years ago, if you're going to play Steve Miller's Fly Like an Eagle, it better be point on or make it your own. Make it your own. See, and that's what I like. That's I like, what I like, know, too. That's what Jay does. She, mm -hmm. I mean, she grabs a song and right. does it her way. Well, you know, it, it's like, it's like any, of the, any of the copy that I would have that I would read on our, our news talk show in the right. morning. You know, it, it, for me, it's a lot easier just to understand the material and talk about it. I don't like reading verbatim. <laughs> you know, I, I, I will say, Henry, it, it, it has been a blast for me. I, I am yeah. extremely humbled to be able to still do what I do. There's uh, uh, Radio has shrunk like a lot of media has, and 
I've had to get really good at what I do. You, you not only have to be able to be good on the radio, but good on social media. You know, we've got personality pages. You need all the skills. You have to be able to you do know. this and yeah. this yeah. at the same time, literally, and, and not get too confused and, and out of focus of what, what the goal is every day. And, you, you know, if I can make today better than yesterday, I'm pretty, a pretty happy guy at the end of the day. Now, uh, um, look, where can people find you? Where do they find you on the radio? G give me some, you know. Probably the best place to find me would be the post office. My picture's been up there for years. <laughs> it's not a good shot. You know, I'm going complain. No. Did you know that a guy did that, didn't like his picture, and sent them a new one and got busted? Yeah, like, not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we call those but weenie anyway, of the week. They weeks. can find you online. They can find the radio station online. Yeah. And they can find your show online. Yeah, so absolutely. Show, and then where we find you online. Well, Monday through Friday, I do a morning show with Rusty Cates on WMAN. It's a news talk station that's been around for probably 75 plus years now. Wow. We're on from 6 until 9. You can always pick us up on iHeartRadio anywhere around the earth. Right. So it doesn't matter where you go. If you want to take your favorite radio station, you can do that. That's fantastic. And then yeah. I do a show in the afternoon on the Fox 102.3. Right. And it's a classic rock station, 3 to 7. Uh, same scenario. You can listen online through the website, through the iHeartRadio app. Um, I've got, you know, personality pages on our website, WFXNTheFox.com. Nice. And, of course, who's not on Facebook these days? Just about everybody. So you can find me on there as well. 